How are you? It's uh, it's the weekend, just about. <laughs> do you? I was wondering, does does making uh, does being a person ever make you feel nauseous? <laughs> I had a morning where uh, being a person really made me feel oh nauseous. I don't know if this is even coming across because it says that my internet problematic. I'm going to dismiss that. I don't know what will happen here on any level. And by here, I mean anything and everything. Um, today, I want to talk about future fucking because part of um, part of why being a person made me feel nauseous today was because I went with my mind on this uh, sailboat in a storm where it took me like all the way along to this little island and it's like here let's get off here and I was like yeah mind that does actually look like the worst case scenario and then my mind's like just wait hang on and we sailed on a little bit further and my, and then I was like oh yeah no that is actually even worse and then my mind's like hang on we're going to go to this other and I was like you know what no mind I'm actually going to go back to the present moment which is fine <laughs> where everything is actually completely fine and as I, as I came back to that I was like wow I mean I don't mean to shit on anybody's imagination because I know a lot of there could be a defense of future fucking made around the imagination that oh I can imagine all these other scenarios that could happen but the present moment is actually far more inspiring. <laughs> There's so much in it, like the same way a single cell reflects the whole universe. There's like nothing missing from this moment. Nothing. I'm not in pain. I'm not dying. I have a roof over my head. Everything is fine here. So what was it? about this morning that made me want to leave this fine place and go and go on the high seas of disaster with my mind. And as I was thinking about it, it's really the same the same reason you go on a crap relationship, right? And it's the same thing to come back to. It's still just setting boundaries. It's just setting boundaries. There is there is something in my space that is denying life. It just happens to be my own thought. <laughs> so how do I set a boundary with my own thought? How do I do what boundaries are for and move, toward, move away from what's life denying and toward what's life affirming if that whole thing is happening in my head? And like with boundaries, and another person, it's not about control. Stepping away from future fucking is actually not about mind control. It's actually, for me, about welcoming, welcoming those thoughts and noticing, oh, wow. What, a, what, a, what about me doesn't want to be okay right now? What would I have to be responsible for if everything were fine. If I'm actually in the present moment, I'm responsible for what's actually going on around me. If I'm future fucking myself, like any form of procrastination, it's a way of me not actually wanting to know what's true, which the only thing that's true is what's happening now, and not wanting to be responsible for it. Because once, once you agree that you're willing to know something, you're also agreeing to be responsible for it. And each of us is so fucking powerful if we're actually in our essence, fully expressed, doing exactly what we're here to do, the thing that only we can do. If we're actually doing that, do you realize how, how much responsibility that is? Because we're all specific and we all have that thing that only we can do, but it doesn't make us special. It makes us very specific and very necessary. 
but my God, if you're the only person in the world that can do this thing just this way, you better fucking do it. But to wind up the identity turbine and get it going, get it polluting all over the place and get it like propelling me into the future, I don't have to be responsible for a damn thing, do I? I'm in like a fantasy land, which is not really imagination. It's not fruitful. It's not fertile. It's just my mind entertaining me with some worst case scenarios that I, yeah, I agree. That is a worst case scenario. Thank you very much, mind. <laughs> now back to the present moment. And so saying, I can say to my mind exactly what I would say to a person who's violating my boundaries. I'm sorry, no thank you, I'm not available for that. In my mind, it's obviously trickier because I have to notice it first. And how, how much time can spin out where you're either nostalgia bathing, enjoying some past, uh, some past warmth or chill or propelling into some future terror or dream. And like those, those things are so tender because they are like there are wishes and dreams and fears and like all the things that we often don't show other people. So they're only in our mind. So they tend to go over and over and over again. We repeat them like cucumbers are chili, like burping at five hours later. You're like, God, go away. Enough. I thought I digested you. I thought you were metabolized, but no, it comes back. And so as, as soon as that returns for me, like, I, I often talk about like my own examples from my own life, not because I think everything's about me, but because what I what I teach in groups, I live. <laughs> and I think it's really important to be honest that once as your practice deepens, it's not like everything becomes easy peasy. What happens is things just get metabolized faster because I notice things right away, because I, I notice it in my body. I, like that propulsion from my mind into the future, into future fucking, I feel that in my body because now I'm like, I'm not touching as sensitively. I'm not eating as sensitively. Like something will have, you know, I'll have eaten a slice of pizza and I'll be like, I don't even remember that. Like I was taken completely out of the present. And that's just me squandering my life. Because I'm somewhere that doesn't exist. I've taken myself out of my own life. And that, that is the place for boundaries. I'm in a life-denying mode rather than a life-affirming mode. And I don't want to do that. That's me totally squandering my life. And I wonder where the time went and act like time is a scarce resource. Time is not a scarce resource. Sit, med sit zazen for 30 minutes. You'll realize how elastic time is. Time is not scarce. Time only seems scarce because we spend so much of it spinning around in our heads, either future fucking or nostalgia bathing, that we miss the moment. We're not even here for the time we have. And that's why, this is, that's why I feel this is so important. And that noticing. We can't really notice it until we're in our body. One of the ways I noticed it in my body today was nausea. <laughs> like the churn, the churn of the worst case scenario actually made me feel physically nauseous. <laughs> oh, God. If, if you would like to practice boundaries in your mind <laughs> or with other people, other people is the much easier practice because uh, you're moving your whole body away and you can actually physically move away from another person and give yourself space to metabolize the experience and decide how permeable your boundaries are. But man, in your own mind, <laughs> shit gets slippery. Um, so that is, that's another thing we can work on next week in boundaries and belonging. That's next Saturday. It's a half day session. It starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time. DM me if you're interested in that and have a beautiful weekend. And please, please don't future fuck yourself. It's spring. There's so much to be present for. Bye.